The world's rainforests are disappearing at an alarming rate as the COVID-19 situation continues to evolve. In a recent study by the World Wildlife Fund, satellite data from 18 countries revealed that deforestation in March was 150% higher than that of the same period over the last two years. 645,000 hectares of tropical forest were destroyed, and that's almost nine times the size of Singapore. Forests were most heavily hit in Indonesia, with more than 1,300 square kilometres lost. The study also found that these losses are almost always a result of human activity. Now, for more insight, we're joined by Dr. Maria Voigt. She's a conservation biologist from the University of Kent. Dr. Voigt, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, how surprising are these rising levels of deforestation to you uh, in recent months? Well, at first, I was surprised as well. But when you think about it, obviously, during the pandemic, although there has been a slowdown, people have been staying at home. Obviously, that also leads to less attention and less enforcement on the ground to curb illegal activities such as deforestation. So while there is less tourism, um, there is also less income opportunities and less employment means people go to the forest and either illegally log or use the forest for other resources, leading to higher deforestation rates. Dr. Voigt, the regions that have been most affected, Indonesia, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Brazil as well, they've been very hard hit. So bearing in mind what you've just said about the opportunis opportunism when it comes to deforestation and, and the, those behind it, what's the main issue here? Is it a lack of enforcement or is it legislation that we need more of it? So I think it's both. But looking at these countries, they're both similar in their problems, but also very different. So the Democratic of Congo is one of the poorest nations in the world, and they have not only been hit by COVID-19, they've also seen one of the largest measles outbreak and a new outbreak of Ebola. More than 50% of the people in the Democratic Republic of Congo are not unemployed and or have been gone back to their village and are now using, for example, forest to make charcoal or use the wood as fuel wood. Brazil, on the other hand, has already, before the pandemic, before recent months, have uh, seen very high levels of deforestation and a weakening of environmental legislations and a signaling that the Amazonian rainforest needs to be developed. So Indonesia has also seen high deforestation rates, but has also signaled in the past that it wants to um, combat illegal logging and also develop into a greener economy. But during this recent months, we have also had reports from regions like North Sumatra from the Loiser ecosystem that there have been vast areas opened for plantations illegally. So it's, I think, a combination of um, legislation issues, especially in Brazil also, but also the enforcement locally and lack of attention internationally. Uh, so give us a sense of, I mean, you mentioned the, the lack of attention um, and enforcement there. Give us a sense of why it's so difficult to, to catch up with both, you know, people who are just simply stricken by poverty um, and hence turning to such activities, as well as really larger criminal organizations uh, like illegal loggers uh, who've been really taking advantage of the situation. What's the, where's the gap that needs to be plugged, do you think? Well, I think it's not only during this time, but already before curbing illegal logging was a big issue. It's uh, the third transnational organized crime in terms of the, the magnitude of the problem. And you need, yeah, basically you need that different uh, levels play together. You need the enforcement from the government. But then also there is a lot of NGOs that work on the ground and that have now stopped being able to work on the ground. They, of course, receive a lot of international funding that um, is needed. And also our, in Western countries, the consumption choices that we make define whether there is a demand for sustainable products or a demand for illegal and cheap, um, for example, tropical timber. 
But then also we have seen another problem that is that local communities or indigenous communities that otherwise patrol these areas or defend intruders and illegal activities are now having to stay home, especially, for example, in the Amazon, these um, in indigenous communities have been very much affected by COVID-19. And so not having that um, local protection and on the other hand, not having revenue from tourism or conservation um, programs obviously leads to a lack of support um, in enforcement as well. Dr. Voigt, while we have you with us this evening, I'd like to get your take on another issue. Uh, we saw promising dips in, in pollution levels and, and global carbon emissions around the world falling earlier during these COVID-19 lockdowns with the, with the lack of activity. But there are now hints that, you know, these pollution levels are sneaking back up, a uh, so-called dirty recovery, as some experts are calling it. Why is it so tough to maintain the earlier improvements that we saw? Well, I think these improvements were in a way artificial because the slowing of the economy was the direct consequence of the lockdown and the kind of first measures during the pandemic. But at least I didn't expect, or it wasn't expected that this would go on forever. And so you would also expect the economy and the pollution and the emissions to go up again. And in fact, it's really worrying that now that there is this recession and there is a large unemployment, the de sustainable development and lowering of emissions is not as important anymore for nations and for companies. So that there is a worry that it would go up even more than pre-COVID levels. On the other hand, I think or I hope that this pandemic can show us what the danger is of deforestation, because in the end, it was a consequence of contact between humans and wildlife that led to this disease. And that it is an opportunity for a more sustainable growth that takes into consideration climate, um, the climate crisis and puts more, more weight on greener alternatives. And thus it could create a win-win situation if there is a concerted effort from Western countries and these countries such as Indonesia, Democratic Republic of Congo and Brazil to use this as a chance for greener development. Almost like a, a fresh start, Dr. Voigt. Thanks very much for speaking with us. Dr. Maria Voigt there conservation biologist from the University of Kent.